Hello, I'm Carol Wantrop with Comorgan, and this is video number one in the Getting Started with KS programming series. This video focuses on getting started with programming by using a project template stored in the IDE. We will begin by opening the IDE. Once open, click on File, then New to start a new project. This opens the new project wizard. First, select the controller type you are using. We will select PDMM and then click Next. The following screen gives you options for the starting template. The first choice is to select a template type. Most applications will start with Pipe Network or PLC Open, including applications with camming and gearing. For this project, PLC Open will be selected. There are two other template types. Coordinated Motion, which is for applications with linear or circular interpolation motion, and Library, for creating library code that can be added to a project. Next, the programming language the PLC code will be written in is selected based on your programming preference. Note in the project, programs using other programming languages can be later added. You are not restricted to using the language chosen for the starting project. All five IEC standard programming languages are available to use in the project. And this is the case when either PLC Open or Pipe Network Motion Engines are selected. For this demonstration, the template used will be PLC Open Motion and PLC Code will be Freeform Ladder Logic or FFLD. Select Finish to open the selected template type. The template project is now open in the IDE. Particular sections in the project tree will be touched on are the PLC code under the PLC section consisting of programs and subprograms, the motion defined under the motion PLC open section, the EtherCAT configuration for all drives, remote I.O., and other EtherCAT devices. The two control panels for operating the project. The KVB project contains a program that can be loaded into a Comorgan AKI terminal and duplicates the functionality of the control panels. The variable in the application are connected in the dictionary and sorted by programs and subprograms in the project. First, we will go to the PLC section consisting of programs and subprograms by double clicking on the program name in the project tree. The program code is open in the editor. The main program consists of the following key parts Network 1 to 4, initializing and starting the motion engine and EtherCAT network, Network 5 and 6, enabling motion. Network 7, setting up gearing. Networks 11 and 12, reading positions. Network 15, drive status. Networks 16 to 20, single axis commands. Fault monitor, the second program, monitors for drive faults. If any are active, reads the number and description. This program also contains code to reset faults. The control panel is for operating the program. The control panel allows creating HMI-like controls for use in running and debugging a project. The dictionary contains variables that can be mapped in the control panel to lights, switches, and other controls. KAS also has a simulator for running programs without the actual drives and motors. Often, either the hardware is not available or it is more efficient to debug code without the hardware. To start the simulator, which gets installed with the IDE, go to the Start menu. Click on All Programs and find the Comorgan section, the Automation Suite subfolder, and then the simulator program. Open it up and the main screen is as follows. The simulator is now started and we can send projects to execute on the simulator. 
I will size the simulator with the IDE so we can observe both when the application is run. The KAS template projects are complete projects that can be run on the simulator or with actual hardware. The one we have been demonstrating will now be running on the simulator. To run with the simulator, click on the simulator icon in the top menu. Notice how the project addresses changes to 127.0.0.1. The loopback IP address, since the simulator is the same node as the IDE. The first step is to compile. Down in the information and logs window in the IDE, the compiler output shows that the compile was successful. After successfully compiling, to run the program on the simulator, select the Target Simulator button in the top menu and then select the Connect to Target button, then the Download button. Finally, to run the project, click on the Run button. Notice as the program starts to run that the simulator shows two circles, each one representing an axis in the project. Next, we can use the control panel to enable the drive. When enabled, the blue circles turn green, indicating the drive is enabled and motion can be commanded. To execute motion, go to the control panel and click on it. Notice the enable LED is turned on the control panel. Simple master-slave motion can be done by setting a master velocity and then clicking on run stop. Each motor position is tracked. Next, single axis motion will be demonstrated. First, jog, then an absolute move. Next, the template program will be run with actual hardware. The PDMM 2-axis demo trainer will be used for this purpose. To do this, first the controller's address must be changed to the IP address of the PDMM. Then the EtherCAT network must be defined. This can be done in the EtherCAT section of the project tree. By right-clicking and selecting Scan, all components connected to the network will be found. In this case, there are two drives, one in the PDMM and the other an AKD-P drive. Also connected is a remote I.O. coupler with an eight-channel input slice and an eight-channel output slice. After discovering all the components, the project must be compiled to create an EtherCAT configuration file. This will be loaded in the PDMM master. Now connect to the target, the PDMM, and download the project. Go to the control panel and click on Enable. Notice the Enable LED on the drive is turned on and also shown in the control panel. The same motion done with the simulator will now be done with actual hardware. Simple master slave will be done by setting a master velocity and then clicking on Run Stop. Notice each motor position is tracked. Next, single axis motion will be demonstrated. An absolute move. Finally, the fault handler will be demonstrated. With the drive enabled, a fault will be forced by overpowering the motor position manually. The fault number and description shows up on the drive and the fault monitor. The fault can then be cleared with the reset button. As you can see, it was pretty straightforward to get started with programming the PDMM. We will see you in the next video lesson. If you are doing the pre-work to Comorgan Automation Suite or just want to do the exercise, please proceed to the link below.